what is a web entity? Let's face that. So web entities are mostly websites, but they don't have to be that. They can be something else. So web entity is a, is a concept that is kind of unique to Hive, and it's based on how URLs are constructed. So let's do that quick. I'm, I'm going to reflect on this series of six URLs. So let's take just a second to look at them. I'm just going to sp split them in their different parts, so because URLs have a part, right? So th this first URL is the Wikipedia page in English on Snail. So it's work, it works like that, HTTP, HTTPS, S means secure, right? EN, because it's in English, wikipedia.org slash wiki slash snail. All the Wikipedia articles are in wiki slash wiki slash something. Now, the second line is the French uh, Wikipedia page on the snail, which is escargot in French. We eat them. And then we don't eat them, the slug. So two pages. One is for the slug, so it's built like for the snail. It's in English, right? So it, you just have slug instead of snail. And the following line has this hashtag behavior, and this means an internal link. So on the page on the slug, you have many different things, right? Uh, and one of them is the behaviors link. You know, in the Wikipedia page, you have a kind of summary on the top. And if you click on behavior, you jump inside the same page, but below. It's an internal link. So where it arrives, so this kind of internal link is here, hash behavior. This is another page on the lettuce. It's once again, nice like the slug. And then you have the page about the lettuce in the mobile version of Wikipedia. Now it may have changed, but let's say it's like that. It used to be like that. So when you go into a mobile version of Wikipedia, you have a new subdomain here. So it's not en.wikipedia.org, it's em.m for mobile, .wikipedia.org. And then the structure changes. You just have the slash w slash index.php, and then query mark title equals lettuce. So there is different syntax for the mobile pages on Wikipedia for some reason. OK. Let's talk and name these different parts of the URL. So first of all, there is the top level domain. It's dot something usually. Sometimes it's dot something, dot something, or even weird stuff. But most of the time it's dot com, dot org, dot fr. And there are rules attached to that, but whatever. So all URLs have a TLD, and all URLs have a domain. So the domain name plus the TLD, they are basically the equivalent of an IP address. So there are huge routers on the web that know where those domains live. And when you send a query to the internet, it arrives to these routers. And then send, they send then the query to the domain. So this arrives in the domain wikipedia.org. And then wikipedia.org, the server of Wikipedia, knows how to interpret the rest, right? Basically. So you have then subdomains. So they are the things that are something dot something dot something that are before the domain. And it's used, for instance, for sometimes a, a lab in our university. So the university is au.dk. If you have a lab inside that or a service, it might be, I don't know, the IT services might be something like its.au.dk. You get the idea. Sub part of the institution. Or... And then you have on the right the path. So the path is a little bit like in a computer, in your folders and in your files, is slash something, slash something. Uh, each website may decide to use that or not, or use different systems, but most of them, for a convention question, and because uh, the crawlers of search engines like it, and people who usually want to be seen, even though it's not always the time, we have this structure, slash something, slash something, slash something. And then you have other stuff, like the query. This is typically what you have when you can type whatever. So in Google, when you type your query, it goes in a, in a part that is like that, with a query, query mark, a question mark, and some things. Sometimes you have ands and stuff like that. It's like a little piece of code inside your URL. And you can have what we call the fragment, which is the internal links. And you also have the protocol, right? It can be HTTP, HTTPS. You have other protocols on the internet, FTP. Um, whatever. Let's forget about the protocol here. And I, I talked about these from the most generic to the most specific. So what Hive does is reordering them. 
this way. TLD, top level domain, right? Domain, the subdomains in the reverse order, the path, the query, the fragment, the protocol. So why, is, why does the, the, the scale from the generic to specific go right to left first and then left to right? It was a mistake. Uh, Tim Berners-Lee said if he, if he had to do that again, he would do otherwise, but we're stuck with that syntax for now. So Hive reorders that from the most generic to the most specific so that it makes it uh, easier for you to find and to define uh, what is your web entity. So let's talk about that. Basically, a web entity is kind of a rule defined by one or many prefixes. So for instance, we can say that Wikipedia is whatever starts with .org Wikipedia. Or if you want, wikipedia.org. But as you know, we reorder that from the most generic to the most specific. So here, for instance, all these pages are considered to be part of Wikipedia because they are all prefixed by .org Wikipedia. Now, if we find a different rule, let's say, for instance, we just want English Wikipedia. We say we just take whatever starts with .org Wikipedia en because the subdomain en in English, right, is the English version of Wikipedia. And if we do that, as you see, we get, so we don't get the French page, which is fine because it's not in the English Wikipedia, but we also miss the mobile page because even though it's en, it starts by mobile.en, right? So this one doesn't work. So we could say it's whatever has .org Wikipedia en or .org Wikipedia men. Okay? So you can add as many prefixes as you want to define web one web entity. That's how you can merge web, web entities, right? Or decide on, of the boundaries. And you can also separate them in different ways. Now, let's say we want to the slug page. So let's say we want .org Wikipedia en slash wiki slash slug. So each of the other pages miss the prefix for different reasons. Sometimes the subdomain, sometimes something in the path. So this one works well. Now, the different um, rules can coexist. And by that, I mean that we could have one rule for Wikipedia and one rule for the page slug. So where does the page slug belong? It belongs to the web entity slug. So this works like that. It looks at the longest prefix, and this is the, the one. So for instance, all these URLs, they match Wikipedia. So the first URL, you have to just be prefixed by .org slash Wikipedia. So here, once you are here, okay, you know you are inside Wikipedia and it looks at the rest and there are no other prefixes. So this one is inside Wikipedia. Now let's look at the page slug. So once you are here, it knows that you are inside the web entity Wikipedia. You're still inside Wikipedia. You're still inside Wikipedia. And when you read slug, it detects a longer prefix, the prefix of the page slug. So now it knows you are inside the page, the web, sorry, the web entity slug. So these two match the long prefix that goes up to slash slug. But they are no longer in Wikipedia because one page is always in one and only one web entity. So when you have a more precise web entity, you take the pages from the bigger web entity and you withdraw them to put them in a different web entity. And you can define automatic rules. So this is the typical case uh, on Wikipedia. You, would want, you, you could want to have the different pages, all the different uh, Wikipedia articles as different web entities. And you can actually do that pretty easily in Hive. And then you would have slash snail as one entity, slash escargot as another entity. The two slash slugs, they will be the same web entity. That's why they have the same color. And slash lettuce will be a different entity. And if you do that this way, uh, the mobile version will be out of the rules because the rules 
here. So there is a limit to the system. Here it's complicated to have a joint rule for two different patterns at the same time. Whatever. So if we were to do the, the Wikipedia articles, we would have to do that separately for the mobile version of Wikipedia. OK. So that, that was what I had to say about web entities. How do you do that inside Hive? I will show you after that. <laughs>